वेलकम बैक टू एलिट को ऑनलाइन क्लास सब्जेक्ट अकाउंटेंसी क्लास एलेवन वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू द बेसिक अकाउंटिंग टर्म्स चैप्टर वन पॉइंट टू इन आवर लास्ट क्लास वी हैव डिस्कस टिल लॉसेज टूडे विल कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम परचेजेस एक्वायरिंग गुड्स और सर्विसेज फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ सेल मे बी रेफर टू एज परचेज फॉर एग्जाम्पल अ क्लॉथ मर्चेंट एक्वायरिंग क्लोथ or a furniture dealer acquiring furniture can be regarded as purchase another example for you modern furniture house purchased five steel armiras from godrej company which is obviously an example of purchase but if modern furniture house purchases three table fans for the use in the shop this table fans will be considered as assets of the business and it will not be considered as purchases so you can see here that usage also plays a great role next we have sales transfer of goods or services is referred to as sell now let's try to understand this with an help of an example if a furniture dealer sells five almiras to his customer it will be considered as sell but if a bookseller sells old furniture to a third party it will not be considered as sell it is because the fact that the bookseller is involved in the book business purchase and sell of furniture is not coming under his normal business activities on sell the title in the goods passes to the buyer therefore transfer of title is the evidence of sell now sales can be of two types number 1 cash sales and number 2 credit sales number 16 stock in trade it refers to the value of the quantum of goods at the disposal as at a particular moment of time normally value of the quantum of good existing as on the opening date of the accounting period is called the opening stock and the value of the goods remaining unsold either in the go down or in transit or with the agents as on the closing date is called the closing stock stocks are usually of three kinds number 1 stock of raw materials number 2 stock of work in progress and number 3 stock of finished goods next we have debtors person to whom goods are sold on credit are called debtors in accounting language however money due from the customers on credit is called debtors in fact sale of goods on credit creates debtors on assessment certain debts that are taken as sure to be realized are called good debt certain debts are considered as doubtful for realization those are called doubtful debts and certain other debts are considered totally bad for realization those debts are categorized as bad debt number 18 bills receivable it is a negotiable instrument it is usually received from a customer against the amount due from him though a business entity can sell goods in cash but a major portion of the sales are made usually on credit when goods are sold on credit the customers often give his acceptance for a particular period and this acceptance is called a bills receivable for example a seller named a sells goods to a customer named b for rupees 50000 on credit now a has drawn a bill of exchange on b on the condition that the sell price will be paid within 3 months so b accepted the bill and after acceptance it becomes a legal document on the basis of this bill a has got the right to receive the sell price from b after 3 months 
and thus the bill becomes bills receivable the next accounting term is creditors person from whom goods or services are bought on credit are called creditors for example suppose an entity has purchased raw materials for its production from three different suppliers from mr x rupees 25000 in cash from mr y rupees 15000 on credit out of which rupees 10000 has been paid and from z rupees 10000 on credit and nothing has yet been paid in this case the total amount of present creditors of the entity will be mr y that is 5000 and mr z rupees 10000 so total will be rupees 15000 Number twenty, bills payable. As the customers cannot purchase goods always in cash, they purchases goods also on credit due to shortage of cash or any other reason. Hence, when goods are purchased on credit, the supplier wants assurance about the payment. So, the seller gets a promissory note in writing from the purchaser. and this promissory note is the bills payable by the customer to the seller for example a customer named c purchased goods on credit from seller named d for rupees 25000 now d draws a bill on c on the condition that c will pay the price of the goods purchased within 3 months from the date of purchase C accepted the bill. The bill became a legal document and becomes a bill payable from the viewpoint of C. The customer as the amount mentioned on the bill is payable by him to the seller. 21 goods. The article or product that is produced or bought and sold in normal course of business may be called goods. For example furniture is considered as goods for the dealer of furniture but the furniture is considered as an asset for a businessman who is not involved in the purchase and sale of furniture so same article may be considered goods from one's point of view and asset from the other point of view our next basic accounting term is cost it is described as an amount of cash expended or other property transferred or service rendered or a liability incurred in consideration of goods and services received or to be received for example suppose there are three factors of production required to produce a particular product the factors include raw materials labor and other items now if the cost of collection of raw materials is rupees 25 cost of labor is rupees 15 and cost for other items amounting to rupees 10 then total cost of the product will be how much obviously 25 plus 15 plus 10 that is coming to rupees 50 next we have voucher It is a documentary evidence both internal and external which is used to support the entries made in the books of accounts of an enterprise it may be a receipt counterfoil of a receipt resolution passed in a meeting cash memo pay in slips purchase invoices minutes of a meeting etc all such documentary evidence are known as vouchers now vouchers can be of two types number 1 primary and number 2 collateral when written evidence is available in original it is known as primary vouchers for example purchase invoice counter foil of purchase receipts etc on the other hand in certain cases evidence in original is not available 
copies of such evidence are made available for the purpose of audit. These vouchers or documents are known as collateral vouchers. For example, copies of resolution passed in a meeting, Xerox copy of demand drafts, etc. However, on the basis of source of documents, voucher can be of two types. Number one, internal vouchers and number two, external vouchers. Number 24, gain. Any benefit derived may be called gain. Normally gain comes from a single transaction or a group of transactions. In this perspective, gain differs from profit because profit refers to the ultimate excess of incomes over expenses relating to an accounting period and the gain refers to the benefit derived during the period from a single transaction or a group of transactions. For example, if an asset costing rupees 2000 is exchanged with other asset costing rupees 2500, then there is a gain of rupees 500. Our next basic accounting term is discount. It refers to a deduction at a given rate from the amount receivable or payable as per the terms of agreement. For example, a seller sells goods usually at a price of rupees 150 per unit. However, he charges 10% less from the known customers as the price for the goods. Though the actual price is rupees 150, he is charging rupees 135 from them. In this case, rupees 15 is considered as the discount allowed by the seller and discount received by the customer. Now, discount may be of two types. Number one, cash discount and number two, trade discount. In case of cash discount, direction is made at the time of cash settlement and on the other hand, trade discount is a deduction from the list or catalog price allowed by a trader in favor of another trader at an agreed rate. Let's understand this with the help of an example. Now, a retailer purchased 50 units of a product from a wholesaler at a price of rupees 1000 per unit and the wholesaler usually allows 10% discount on the price of the product. In this case, the retailer is entitled to get a trade discount of rupees 5000. How 5000? You can see the cost per unit is 1000 rupees and the total units are 50. So 1000 into 50 is coming to 50,000 and 10% 10 of 50,000 is 5000. So what is the amount you have to pay? The amount you have to pay is 50,000 minus 5,000 that is rupees 45,000 to the wholesaler. And by this we complete our chapter. In our next class we are going to discuss the question answers. Thank you.